Hi everyone, a uh, big hello to everyone who's watching all over the world. Um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate being Community Africa in conjunction with Beam Africa or this um, platform, Beam Arambi Africa, which is the coming together of um, um, African practitioners in the AC industry to basically share knowledge. Um, also, I see this as an opportunity for young professionals like me and um, industry influencers to um, showcase to the world the benefits of adopting digital technology in their workflows, their firms, and then in the industry at large. Um, I would say that um, Africa is on its way to adopting, to fully adopting digital technology um, in the AC industry. So therefore, I'm here to, to, to play my role in um, seeing the vision of a fully digitalized um, industry and um, 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 smart city ready industry can be achieved in the year 2030. So uh, without uh, further ado, um, let's dive into the presentation. I believe so much that you've learned a lot from previous um, presentations and then discussion in this conference. So I believe also that this, this particular presentation um, would um, be very insightful and would also showcase to you the possibilities we have in um, our industry. I'll be speaking on the future of project information delivery in Africa um, and uh, with unnecessing the power of big data analytics. So we'll be discussing how big data analytics can help us achieve the vision of um, effective delivery of project information across Africa. Uh, my name is Ken Gayabadi. I'm a BIM consultant by practice, um, a civil engineer by practice, and um, I'm a data science enthusiast who is um, specializing in data science. Um, a little bit about myself. A little bit about myself, like I said, um, a civil engineer by practice. Um, I got a bachelor's in of, of science degree in um, civil engineering here in Nigeria. Um, I specialize in structural engineering. I'm a BIM specialist with about three years experience developing and managing BIM models. I'm also Autodex certified in the use of Revit for structural design. A bit of my experience, I started off my career um, as a student advocate for BIM Africa in the year 2019. I was one of the winners. Also, I'm a full-time BIM consultant, currently working um, with firms in Nigeria and um, abroad um, in Europe, um, and helping them to develop custom solutions and then um, develop and uh, manage their BIM models. Um, I also have programming experience. I automate, I basically automate BIM processes. And I'm also the founder of KS Digital and Innovation, a startup organization that helps um, um, companies, basically engineering companies and civil engineering companies and firms or to start up the implementation of um, BIM in their firm. And also I provide structural engineering services and a bit of my interest, I have interest in visual and textual programming. Um, like I said initially, I'm a data science and analy analytics enthusiast. I'm also um, a BIM automation enthusiast. All right, a bit of the content that we'll be looking at. We'll be talking about what big data is, um, understanding big data analytics, identifying big data analytics and its application in the built environment. The technologies within the BIM space for big data analytics, how big data analytics can help reduce potential extra costs during a project life cycle, um, the benefits of big data analytics to facilities managers, and also have a case study workflow of how this can be implemented, and special case studies for BIM managers. Now, um, what is big data? Big data means a data set that is large in terms of volume and is more complex than simplified. Is it to read? something very massive that you can't um, you can't process manually? And it's exactly as the name suggests. It's very big, very big amount of data and is typically produced in our everyday life. Um, this kind of data contains greater variety in arriving in increasing volumes 
and with more velocity. And what this means is that if you produce, uh, it, it, it's more, it's produced almost every second of our existence. So as you walk, data is being produced because you browse the internet, you you surf, you you make calls, you send messages. So this data keep increasing, and it becomes greater in volume. So big data also simply means data set containing a large amount of data, whether that's structured and or unstructured. Now big data, uh, because of its large volume and high complexity of um, its high complexity, traditional data processing software cannot handle it. Your traditional Excel um, spreadsheets can't help you analyze. So it takes years of work to analyze and process um, and also give meaning to a large set of data using your traditional software or spreadsheets. So because of it is big, it also requires something a bit sophisticated to analyze it. Now I'm going to give a little bit of scenarios, to, uh, a real life scenarios to explain uh, what I mean. Now when you see this man um, is in front of a big sea not knowing how to jump, just imagine he wants to swim. Um, if he jumps immediately, he can get lost, the whole ocean can swallow him and take him off, take him to somewhere else. So it's, it's just like a scenario of how big data is. You can't just jump into a very, big, very large set of data saying you want to analyze it. It, 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 it will swallow you up at some point because of its cumbersomeness and its um, uh, complexity. Another instance is a man standing in front of a, a big chalkboard with multiple and very mathematical problems to solve, not knowing where to start from. He has very massive um, number of um, mathematical problems in front of him. He doesn't know which one to solve because it's very complex and they, and they vary. And that's when we talk about the volume and the variety of big data. So these are scenarios that you can um, um, relate to when you are talking about big data. It's something very complex and can be analyzed by just jumping into it. It takes a bit of um, complexity. So what are data types? Um, the first here is structured data. A structured data is clearly defined and um, they are actually searchable data types, something that you are that has structure that has been um, uh, well arranged. And um, this kind of data adds to a predefined data model. Um, examples are quality beam models, a lot more of them on structured data. So you have textual data, image files, videos um, that does not have a predefined data model or is not organized in a predefined manner. Examples are social media publications, you have emails, texts, um, and the number of them. So um, another, another one here is called semi-structure because um, it's semi-structure because it's a, it, it takes a form of structured data. It's a bit organized, um, but they don't obey tabular structure of data model. More like in your spreadsheets where you have um, your data assigned to columns and rows, and they are not um, in that way. Examples are your XML data, your JSON, your sensor data. They are actually a bit structured in a way, but um, um, they don't have a tabular structure, uh, structure of data models. Uh, examples are um, poor quality B models. B models are not uh, modeled. Um, standards and um, with the aim of um, delivering um, um, value and information to the end user. We have one and then manuals used by facility managers, calculation sheets used by engineers. And last type of um, data here is metadata. It's called, otherwise called um, data about data. So it's more like saying the information about the particular data. It's very, very important because um, it's as important as um, um, the actual data. Examples of this kind of um, data, which is metadata, uh, is um, author of the file, the date modified, the time the file was created, the size of the file. They are very, they are, they are very important because you need them to track the actual data. Now, let's um, look at um, big data analytics. We've spoken about, we talked about big data. Now, let's understand big data analytics. What is big data analytics? It's actually a field in the IT space that treats um, ways to analyze um, systematically, extract information about um, large data sets that are very complex to be dealt with by using traditional software, but data processing and applications. 
So it's it's more like a, a solution to the problem of big data. This is um, a definition from Wikipedia. Now, um, now if you have to understand big data analytics, there is um, a, a a breakdown that we that is naturally followed. So you need to look at the data analysis and usage. So how is data analyzed and why and uh, how is data being used? Now, it starts off with um, data collection. So, for data to be analyzed, it has to be collected, then it has to be processed, then it has to be managed. So, that you have data collection, then to data processing, data management. There are branches of um, big, um, big data analytics. They help you analyze data. Now, data collection. The first of it is the volume. These are things to consider when collecting data. The volume of the data, how big the data is, the variety of the data, how um, vary, varying it is, different types of data, that's the variety. Now the velocity, at what um, speed, at what um, um, speed, yes, is it um, coming in? For example now, emails are always coming in every day. So that is data accumulating. So we are talking about the velocity when we are talking about uh, how much data is being, is, is, being, is being added per time. The veracity, the variability, um, the visualization. So these are, these are things that are, are to be considered when collecting data. Also, another, which is, um, another branch is um, data processing. Data processing here yeah, um, involves um, the sequence of um, tasks that involves them um, converting that data that is yet to be processed or without meaning into something that can help solve the problem. The first thing to look at is how to store that data that was collected. Then you look at how to mine. Mine means to get, to extract data. The data must have been stored first before it is being mined. Then cleansing the data, removing unnecessary information from the data, the aggregation, combining data, data sets that are, that are relevant um, to each other, the analysis, which is the core of it, the modeling, creating um, um, tabular representation and graphs and visualization graphs um, to showcase the whole concept. Then we look at um, data management. When you talk about data management, we are talking about security. How, how, how are you ensuring that the data is not being exposed because um, data is, is, is very, very valuable in certain businesses and then companies. So how far, how well is it being managed? So the governance, the compliance, um, how, how well is it um, following standards, um, the talent skills, a number of them, privacy ownership, these are things to consider um, during um, the management of big data. Now when we are, let's identify big data in the built environment. We look at the foundation. How does it start? Now, data can't really be identified in the built sector if it is not being digitalized. So digitalization comes first when talking about the basics or the foundation of big data. So um, when you when you see um, data um, in its raw form, like in form of drawings, in form of calculation sheets, um, which is not yet processed or well structured for analysis or to get information from them, then um, it will be very hard to really identify it as um, a, a data set that can be analyzed. So identifying big data that can be analyzed in a built environment requires it to be digitalized in the sense that imputing this data into a, a database that's your computer or online or web web um, 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 resources or web um, platforms where data can be stored well arranged and then put together in a very meaningful way next to digitization is building information modeling after capturing project data digitally then we come into being which is a platform where the geometric data of your project 
be it um, structural um, um, building project rather um, or infrastructure project it's a kind of like a, a concept that helps you understand that and this their data the geometric data can be captured in 3d so when you identify big data you, you identify from the from the basis of digitization and um, then implementation using BIM. Now, when we talk about um, the data sharing, how is data being shared? Now we look at the current state in the industry now, um, which I believe will soon um, change. The way data about um, a project from its inception to design and then um, construction, even operation, is actually not structured. Why? Because um, there has not been any kind of a um, mindset of um, having the end user, which is the owner, to, to, to flow with the project in the sense that every aspect of the project, the, um, even, from, even while, while designing um, from the hand of the architects and the engineers, the owner has a full grasp of it. What we have in the current state now is such that um, the architect and the engineer carry out their design. Um, they give it to the, to the builder, possibly the contractor. Then the contractor gives to subcontractors. So it's, the, the, the chain is kind of broken. It's not connected. So, but now we are looking at um, a state where um, and there is collaboration and connectivity in sharing data. So for you to identify data in the big, big, big built environment with the with the goal of um, digitizing this in the in the near future, you need to look at connected construction where every stakeholder in the project has a full grasp of what of where the project is heading to. We are talking about collaboration and connectivity. This is the future goal where the design, the build, and the operate phase is being connected. There's no disconnection between them. There's a structured um, arrangement of them um, and, and sharing of data amongst everyone within the project. Now, identifying big data within the design um, uh, phase. Identifying big data in the built environment. I'm looking at the design phase of any project. The first part is um, the beam models and fabrication drawings because this is the basis of um, any project um, realization and implementation. Things like undocumented drawing lists, uh, model data and reports, uh, very cumbersome data that is building up over time as the project advances. Submittal. So this, these documents are actually not um, um, documented in the sense that they are not captured in a database. So they keep adding up and they can, they can result to a very, very large and, and massive amount of data that can't easily be processed. Now, design options are also examples of um, um, big data design revisions, superseded designs. And these are big data, um, examples of big data that you will find in the design phase of um, any project. Also, um, when carrying out environmental studies, uh, which is also called the green data for sustainable design goals. Um, weather data is an example of big data. And some of these um, have been provided by certain um, organizations. Example, which is Energy Plus. So when carrying out um, environmental studies, you don't need to go out there and uh, make your own research how the climate, the weather is so um, throughout um, a, a, a year. But you have a database for this. So that's an example of um, um, big data, data and climate change data because now uh, there's um, the climate all over the, all over the world um, changes. So prediction of um, certain weather conditions are kind of impossible. So if there is a database that captures the changes over time, then the issue of um, wrongly predicting the weather condition can be solved. So these are examples of um, the environmental studies aspect of big data. 
Now, also when carrying out um, the quantification and the material costing of um, uh, a project, um, there are certain data that build up from um, from the design phase even to the operation phase. So, um, building material cost um, requires a database, I would say, where real-time cost data can be extracted from. Um, when I say that, I mean that um, the cost of materials kind of increases by over time because of infl inflation. While designing a project or when a project is yet to be constructed, it is very important to know the current state of um, the cost of materials um, in a in a particular possibly possibly a country. So, if there is a database or an online resource where um, this kind of information about the material cost can be gotten, can be obtained from, then it will be so easy for engineers and um, architects, even quantity surveyors, to easily get um, this data and use for costing the project. So, if there can be a place for a, a platform for integrating and real time cost data, then you can see that um, each of big data, um, unprocessed big data can be solved. And also, predictive material cost also tends to build up um, the need for big data analytics and standardization. There are certain standards to which um, materials have been, have been, have been quantified and built. Um, so, following the standards might be erroneous. Or if there is a platform, a database that automatically helps you to follow the standards while costing your material, and it, it's it's a way forward. Now, in the build phase, during construction, um, there are certain site and construction data that builds up and becomes in massive and complex data. Example is traffic data. Another which is community activities, business activities, site activities, logistics. This helps um, to understand the way construction materials can be transported. Also, um, the social media engagement and public opinions. For example, now, if you want to construct in a particular environment, um, knowing what uh, the public is saying about the environment is very important. So, collating this data from the public builds up even to um, um, a very complex um, size that can't easily be processed or need to be processed. User experiences, um, for example, um, people that have built in a particular location and there needs to, um, there needs to, and there is a need to, 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 to build in that same location. Understanding what um, the experiences of people in the environment are will help you know um, the best way and the best uh, method of um, um, constructing, for example, the health needs and then the health, uh, health, um, health challenges that they, 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 they have during construction of a um, certain kind of like um, edifices or monuments, industry challenges um, and the like. So, in the operate um, phase of um, a project life cycle, there are certain data that needs to be uh, captured. Which is one of which is the building performance data. Um, an example here is the end user experience. How um, the users of um, buildings, um, newly constructed buildings, are faring well with the building, what their needs are, if their needs are met, the energy consumption of that building is built up into complex active data, space management. So understanding how the space um, allows for effective working and uh, productivity in an office, for example, builds up um, um, massive data that needs to be anal analyzed. Client comfort also is an example of big data in, in the approach phase in maintenance plans and schedule. Also for sustainable development goals, um, there are certain data that, that have been built up, example, which is um, this traffic stress information. How, um, and, and for example, in an infrastructure project, possibly after it's been com completed, 
you need to understand how the traffic is being stressed or if there's a, so much traffic during um, certain hours of the day um, water supply trends health challenges over time these are data that uh, that can be collected um, during the operation phase of any project application of the big data analysis in the built environment we now want to look at the application of big data analytics in the built environment um, now in the design phase how can we apply big data analytics to solving big data problems in the ace industry now um, example of which is um, creating or establishing project information databases for quality beam models because beam models um, can, can tend to increase in information as, as time goes on during the design phase so even during the coordination and construction phase of a project so much data is still put into a beam model and how to capture that data real time is a solution is an application of big data analytics so having a database been established for this kind this 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 change in information this update uh, information update in beam model is one of the applications of uh, big data analytics the real time project cost build up as a, as a, as a model is being is being developed a beam model is being developed with time um adopting or creating a, a platform that automatically costs the model as it is being built up for every change that is being made on the model so social media discussions to decide what to build and where to build is an application of big data analytics environment data from building data sources um like i mentioned earlier energy plus to predict building performance so you use this data that has been established by certain organizations to predict the performance of buildings to predict the performance of buildings in um, um, a built environment also analysis of historical data to pick out patterns of construction risk to steer new projects towards success and avoid pitfalls now um, in the build phase data collected from sensor input from machines can also be processed um, for example now if you need to show the active and high due time of your machine um, if you need to draw conclusions about the best mix of buying and leasing such equipment or machines and if you need to determine how to use fuel most efficiently to lower cost and the um, ecological impact you need to process data being collected from those sensors that have been attached to these machines this is one of the applications of um, um, big data analytics during um, the construction phase of any project also the geological geographical um, location data of um, equipment and machines relating to the site um, if you need to improve logistics on the site um, and also spare parts of machines to be made available geographical location data of such sites and certain factors surrounding it um, also help you to know when and how to use, utilize um, your equipment um, um, also knowing how to transport your equipment from certain locations to the site now how facility managers can benefit from big data analytics this is now within the um, operation phase of um, any build facility um, that's or any project now detecting future power outages or equipment failure is a very very important application um, of big data analytics getting information about um, the, the power usage um, power power outage, outages when power goes off in a building number of occurrences um, and equipment fails or um, also the number of times that um, the equipment has been has been serviced uh, kind of um, the data that um, when being processed would help a facility manager to effectively manage a facility and also um, effectively managing building performance and energy savings big data analytics will help facility managers to manage a building performance of um, any building as designed by the architect and the engineers and also ensure that energy savings and goals have been achieved now office space management can also um, be analyzed through sensor data 
uh, once a sensor is kind of like attached to a building or to offices um, to understand the the um, workers' interaction during working hours, it will and um, it will help you detect or predict how efficient or how uh, effective and productive workers can be. So this this data, when processed, will help you manage uh, effectively space uh, manage the space in an office. Now, looking at the technologies and tools for big data analytics in a data environment, there are a number of technologies. If we don't look at this, it's more like saying um, we are jumping into the air and you are not just uh, you are not coming down because gravity is out of it. Gravity is here is the technology here and the tools that helps you what achieve big data analytics. One of which is Power BI. It's um, um, a cloud-based analysis service that helps you um, get inside into a massive amount of data and so used to extract and then visualize data. It's a platform that most um, um, data analysts use to visualize data and to create um, data reports. It is currently being used in the industry now to, to do marvelous things. Um, now certain um, professionals and um, developers have been connecting Power BI to certain BIM authoring platforms like Autodex Revit to capture um, facility data like um, the uh, number of the rooms, the geometry of the room, location of the rooms, the, and other uh, information about um, that facility. It's been captured in 3D not just um, as um, graphs or charts, also you could visualize your 3D model in Power BI um, and also send reports, create reports using Power BI. Um, and also Power BI also helps to, um, to help you predict um, certain um, behaviors of your, of your, of your building. Um, for example now, for facility managers specifically, they have to manage a facility. There are certain information that they need. So they can't get it first hand, but they need to predict when this machine needs to be serviced, when this equipment needs to be serviced, when um, this equipment needs to be changed or replaced. So Power BI is like a tool that helps you achieve that. Once you can um, get a hold of it and you can you have built comp competence in its use, you can predict the performance of a of a machine or an equipment easily using um, the available tools in it and plugin. Also, there are also some um, programming languages that are um, kind of like um, infused in Power BI. It's, it's like a, an extension of Power BI. They work inside of Power BI. So if you're a developer and you and you program, you write codes, you can do that in Power BI and easily get your results. Power BI is a very great, is a wonderful tool for data analytics um, in the built environment. It doesn't just apply to the built environment, other aspects of um, in information technology, the IT space. Power BI has been very, very, has proven to be very, very useful to so engineers, architects, and uh, quantum surveyors are also adopting its, um, its flexibility and its dexterity in providing solutions to all kinds of um, data. So, another um, technology is Python programming, which I specifically love and I do use very often in analyzing a massive amount of data. I'm actually using it in a workload I'm going to present in this um, discussion. Um, and some libraries have been made available in Python programming. Example, with the pandas, these libraries are are uh, specifically designed to solve um, big data problems and helps you analyze very very massive data easily once you can have a hold or have the understanding of python programming as a programming language so um one of some of these tools include pandas um non non-py um a math plot library math plot library for creating um, graphs and uh, charts both in 2D and 3D, um, SCI Pi, and lots more of them. You have a, a, a very long list of them that of, of, of packages and libraries inside of Python programming that can help you 
analyze your data once you can understand the basics of python programming it's very easy to do now there are certain case studies of um big data analytics application in the build sector actually i'm going to um summarize them in 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 three images the first one is the big data sources we have a lot of sources of uh, big data like we've mentioned example is uh, a big a big model example could be um user experiences and the likes so it all starts with um having a data source that produces very large or massive amount of data and um it's moving moving further you discover that all you need a data analytics tool or technology that helps you analyze this big data coming from these big data sources so a number of them which you mentioned in the previous slide which we mentioned them um, the power bi and the um, python programming language and then we move to this goals and solution so it, it's a it's a the channel is is very complex when there is a goal and it's incomplete if there's no goal the aim of um, big data analysis is to solve a problem or to provide solution to a problem providing very large amount of data so you have a big data source that produces big data you have your big data analytics too and then you have your goal and you have the solution so so this is how big data analysis can help in solving big data problem um, issues in the build sector so it's a special case study for BIM managers during design coordination now um, the the big data source in this case uh, is a BIM model from Autodex Revit this is um, a workflow I'm going to show in a video in a short while now we have a BIM model which is um, producing massive data amount of data that needs to be analyzed then we have the data analytics tool for data mining and processing and it's all done via automation automation so you don't have to do anything manually really um, so one of them is dynamo which is a a, a plugin kind of like an extension of revit that helps you to automate certain processes being processes in um, revit autodex revit another which is an um, excel which we are all popular it's a very popular um, platform we are all familiar with um, it helps you to capture um, this data it's like a storage um, um, a medium storage medium for the big data so dynamo captures the data from revit sends it to excel then python is like um, the machine the, the the processing part the cpu of this whole workflow it helps you process the data and give you the solution which you need in navis works and for an automated fly detection so what this whole workflow does is that it creates um a, a link between revit and navis works not following the usual one where you have to export your revit model to navis works the navis work extension model and the coordination model which you import into navis works and carry out fly detection actually in navis works the kind of cloud detection that is being carried out is um discipline against discipline um and category against category for example your your nep um, um elements against your textual um, element um you have your docs against your walls you have your docs against your beams and likes so this is um, the usual the normal workflow in the normal workflow you can't you can't really filter out the um the big data coming from revit easily in navis box by doing that manually because it will take so much time to achieve for example now if you want to clash your architectural model against your structural you know in architectural model so much would have been have been have been modeled into it for example you have generic models you have lines you have um um groups of um, so many things there that are not useful or will not be useful in the class detection so um when you carry out those that kind of clash test it kind of brings out a false positive more like saying that there's a clash between this element and, and this element which is actually not necessary so you see thousands of clashes in um navis works which is actually not um how it should be 
But now this workflow helps you streamline it. It helps you cut out every um, element or or let's say model, B model um, element that are not necessary. So you have to you 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 would pick by yourself what you want to clash in um, your in your Navisworks platform. So um, invariably, what what well what what you learn from this workflow is um, how how to actually manage time by um, working with um, a clash matrix. A clash matrix is more like a a, a matrix in, in a sense where you have all your elements that you want to clash on the left on, as as a row, and all your elements you want to clash um, as the column. So Example architecture versus a structure. You have your architecture in your row, and you have your structure in your column. So, um, the interte intersection of of um of these elements would um, be where you assign your clash type and your clash tolerances. So, actually, um, and for me not to talk too much, um, I'm going to explain this in a video. Um, so it's more like um a pre. This has been developed for some, a, a, some time ago. However, um, I'm bringing it up here because it's a it's a way um, B managers can help themselves cut down on um, the time they spend in coordinating models, trying to apply this clash detection. So it's it's more like automating clash detection, Excel matrix, and Navis works clash test using data analytics programming tools. It has it's developed by me. Um, a workflow of this. Is stated here. Um, you can also find a workflow in my GitHub, which I would um, put. I'll put. I'll put up the link to my GitHub um, repository for this particular workflow here on this um, um, platform. We have the whole workflow broken down into parts for easy understanding. And it actually has four parts: one, two, three, and four. And it's very. It doesn't take time. It's in a short time. You get it done. So this part three actually helps you to automate the creation of the clash matrix. Everything is actually automated um, using the Python programming as um, the driving tool. Um, so just follow through in the video that, that is that is um, that I will present now. So the part one, part two, part three, and part four um, are, are explained in the video. So enjoy the video presentation as. Um, I showcase how I came about this workflow and how it can be of help to you as a BIM manager and um, anyone, possibly a BIM coordinator who does um, or creates a clash matrix um, for clashing and elements in Navis works. This is actually a big um, data analysis workflow because such data can't actually be um, analyze manually. It takes so much time to do. So, um, without further ado, let's move to um, this workflow and video presentation. Please enjoy the video presentation and um, learn from it. This workflow begins with the interaction between Revit um, and Dynamo. And so, here we have our model, our B model, with um, the associated linked models. As for other disciplines, and uh, we quickly jump into Dynamo and just visualize how the script looks like. What we are doing here is to get all the categories and family types of um, uh, models in Revit. So all the type and element types and categories we have in the active document and also in the linked documents. That's your architecture and all other disciplines. Okay, collecting those data and be moving and then exporting it to Excel for the next steps of um, the workflow. So um, we have a very simple script here. A bit complicated at some point where we are collecting data from the linked model, the linked Revit models. Um, there are some packages that we used. Um, and um, these packages will be mentioned in, um, in, a, in my GitHub. It has been mentioned in my GitHub. You will see what you need to download, the packages to download to have the script work well for you. Alright, so we'll be moving to Dynamo Player to run the script. 
now in Dynamo Player. Okay, now we have this running in the time. Okay, okay. Now so we are we have to set this as true initially because we are going to run this script for the active document which is the Actetra model. Every other linked model will come later. So when we run this you see that Excel opens um, immediately. It shows that the interaction is working well. So we take the categories we want to populate in our Excel sheet or worksheet. Automatically in no time it um, exports the data. Um, and this is very necessary because we can't do it manually collecting data from sheets. It's very cumbersome. So we also do for the other um we do the we run the script for the other models which are the linked models. And starting with the structure and um, we have the option and um, set run script for link um, as true. So we can have um, the scripts read data from um, the structural link model. We take the link model, a structure, and then select the categories we want to populate in the Excel workbook. And then in no time, it comes out in Excel. Yeah. So we'll do the same thing for every other um, discipline. That's the every other model. Now we are going to be doing for the doing that for the mechanical. All right, so mechanical. We run the script with the boolean and true or false set as true. So we pick mechanical link model. Select the categories we want to export. Taking in mind that putting in mind that um, we are trying to create a clash test. So we don't need all the categories exported. Now this one benefits compared to using Navisworks. You can filter out the elements of your clash right from Revit. So um, we we'll, we we'll do the same thing for electrical, the electrical beam model, and we run the script. We have to, we have to select as usual as we did for for the same as we did before. Select the categories. Yeah, it's you have many options to choose from. Keep in mind the useful ones that requires a clash test. Finish. And what I'm doing here is to bold in the categories. Do the same thing for the other um disciplines and finally for the plumbing model uh, linked to the Revit model uh, plumbing finish select the categories we want pipe fittings and pipes I think they're enough finish then we have it. Now, if you check scene, um, okay, we bold in it and then align. Now you see that um, we're done. We are done here with Dynamo Player. Um, you observe that um, every of the disciplines and sheets. Now we move to the part two, which is in the um, in, our visual, in, our, in our Visual Studio Code, where we have our Python script already in place, which I will share also in my GitHub. Now we can also read the data we just populated into Excel here in Visual Studio Code by opening the preview. Um, and let's dock it. Let's dock it on the right hand side of our screen. Um, yeah. I have it docked and you can see every of the disciplines arranged in the order we want it to be. And the script follows this order in creating the clash matrix. 
Now what we just have to do is to run the script that that's setting our working directory. Where we will have our where we have the location of this Excel we just um, created. We delete this, it's not important. Okay, so now it's time to run the script. And this is the folder where we have our Excel file. Uh, Excel, what we just exported from Revit. Now we are going to run the script to create the flash matrix. Automatically, it creates the flash matrix. Yeah, and you have a preview of the data inside of the Excel. That flash matrix as well. You can preview it here. So whatever you see here is what is in the Excel. So there, let's open it up. Now you can see that automatically our flash matrix is created with all the disciplines, categories, and element types arranged in order. This can be done manually at a short period of time. It will take a lot of time to do this. Let's do this. This is not, this is not useful. Okay, so we have this draw all the disciplines in place. Now, up next, we need to populate the um, the class tolerances and the class type. The class tolerances and class types are actually going to be tied in together. Each representing the hard type of flash and 50 representing the flash tolerance in millimeters. So we choose the um, intersection of cells where we want the flash to happen. So since it's a matrix, it works like um, it works with whatever is being populated on the column and on the row is what we see in our flash matrix. So we are done populating our data, our flash matrix, um, flash type and um, flash tolerances. Um, we do this part of um, the C they represent um, the flash and uh, it represents clearance time, flash type, the clearance type of flash. If you check now this works you see those options there. Now we move to the third part of um, uh, our we workflow. We move to the third part of our workflow. Now, so since we populated this, then we just need to get the um, path and copy it and paste here into our script. This is the second script we'll be using to run to create a an XML kind of a um, flash test. It creates an XML export, which we are going to import into Navis Works. Now, if we check it now, it's running. Script is running. Wait for it to run. And when it's done, it brings out the file. It's, it's reading the data and processing it. Well, now it's done. And you can see that the file has been exported. Now we bring in this exported file into Navis Works, which is a final process in this workflow. We already have our model in Navisworks with all the other um, associated models. Um, so we see the clash clash test dialog box. We have um, no clash there. So we are going to be importing this clash, this um, XML file. Now, the aim is to automatically create a search sets and also the clash test. Now, if we check the yeah, outcome now, we have our clash test already created. It's automatic. And also, if you check our search sets, it's arranged, well arranged based on um, the cut and the disciplines and also different types. If you isolate them, you will see that it's um, well um, structured. And this is all done automatically. You don't have to create this uh, the search sets yourself in Navis Works. Automatically, the script does that for you. It's just a matter of clicking, running the script, and then. And if you observe the visible categories here, the ones we exported. So the ones you didn't export are not visible. So that's why you're able to you can you can 
filter out certain element types you don't need. So let's run the test. While running, um, as I was saying that you don't need to filter out um, your elements that are not needed like lines, rooms, manually. Automatically you do that in the first, the first part of the workflow. Now you can see that you had um, clash type and tolerances are already populated based on what you have in your excel sheet on the second workflow second part of the workflow so if we check it we are going to do a quick check of that and if we check our clash test we can see that uh, we can see the results yeah the clashes that we have based on what we exported um, drag it down a bit okay now oh, yeah you can see the results of our clash all this was done within a very short time imagine you have a very large model where you have to manually populate the clash tolerances it takes a lot of time that's the essence of big data analytics where you can you can streamline the workflow and make sure and, and, and help you help yourself cut down on the amount of time you spend carrying out this kind of um beam process or um, workflow so you have all your clash um, the available the ones that are the clashable elements or the elements that clashed with each other you have them yeah and um, we can see the results that's the goal of um, this whole workflow you don't have to spend so much time doing this manually this is one part one aspect of um, um, data analytics that can be applied in, um, in, in the beauty sector. This is the design coordination phase where you ensure that your elements are, are coordinated, your B models are coordinated. Let me check the one, let's cross check the outcome, how, what we populated here. As if you check this, one of the, this is the pipes here, pipes. We can see that pipes here is clashing with duct fitting yeah intersection point there that's c200 that's clearance clearance kind of clash with a clash clearance of 200 let me check that you see the same thing here which is clearance and same value 200 in mm in millimeters so that's that's the workflow um this is just one aspect of them um, this data analytics the application data analytics um we tend to bring to you um a plugin in revit that does this automatically without going through the um third party softwares we use the like um, visual studio code so we are working on that currently and um i should be able to publish it and then release it out for download for the public and then um, beam for the for, for the beam community and users um, of um, Revit. Thank you. So also where yeah, you could find the um, the workflow, you go to my GitHub page um, at Kenistruct. Yeah, just good. Yeah, I'm just typing this link and take it to my page. You will see the workflow well explained. Um, the files are provided. The, the scripts are provided there. Yeah. The, uh, even sample models, sample Revit models you could try the workflow on is provided in my repository on GitHub and also you could follow me on um, LinkedIn for more contents like this. I'm actually creating a series for structural engineers um, who wants to implement BIM. So if you want to learn certain workflows that can be very useful um, during your design process as engineers, as architects, as team managers and coordinators, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name there is Kendi Ayubadi. And um, you can also contact me uh, via this 